So before the actual discussion starts, let me just give you a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I will be discussing some theories in this, um, so that's a bit of a spoiler alert actually. And yeah, I might not cover everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the series first. I'm going to gloss over a few things and then we're just going to get get into the some of the theories that I know of that I'm aware of. And then I'll ask for your input at the end. Anyway, thanks very much. Here's the video. Good evening, everybody. My name is Nathan and I want to talk about Stranger Things. It is amazing. Have you not heard of it yet? Wow. Well, I'm on IMDB's page here, just for some reference. I've just completed watching the whole of season one. Hopefully there's going to be another season two, but I'm going to get to that. Stranger Things, it's rated at 12, each episode 55 minutes. There's eight episodes in total. It's got a rating here on IMDB of 9.2. Damn high! And we like that since we are waiting very patiently for Game of Thrones. So we do need something else to watch and talk about. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm gonna read off the synopsis for this as well, so here it is. When Joyce Byers' 12-year-old son, Will, goes missing, she launches into a terrifying investigation into his disappearance with local authorities. As they search for answers, they unravel a series of extraordinary mysteries involving secret government experiments, unnerving supernatural forces, and a very unusual little girl. I'm gonna get to her momentarily. So yeah, before we get to that, just let me share my thoughts on this series and what I think of it thus far. I love this! This is great! It's got, got such a classic 80s vibe to it. The story centers around, you know, four, four kids, five if you if, if you don't uh, count Will, because, well, he, he's kind of there and he isn't, but uh, we'll get to that as well. <laughs> the opening episode of Stranger Things uh, pretty much starts and running with a scientist running away from a monster. Oh, God, yes! Amazing opening. Um, it then goes to these four kids. Um, they're playing playing Dungeons and Dragons. After the game, um, which they don't finish. Ooh, it's really good. Uh, the, the crossovers and uh, similarities that, that goes on between that game and, and the actual story. But uh, the, yeah, the, the kids, they actually go home and on the way home, will see something in the middle of the road. And it chases him back to his house, uh, to which he then goes missing. Personally, I love the opening. Why? Because, you know, you don't quite see what, what the thing is. You just, you know, there's there's one part where he, he actually looks out of his window and you just see the shadowy silhouette of something tall and just thin walking towards him. I got Slenderman vibes personally off that initial thing before I, I actually learned what it was. Uh, fans are actually calling the, the monster uh, Tuliped, and you'll see why. So from there, uh, Will goes missing. The mother obviously comes home, finds out he's not there. His brother Jonathan obviously helps the mother to, you know, start a search party and really get the ball rolling to, to find Will again. And cue our hero cop, which turns out, you know, he, he starts out as a, as a bit of a... Mm, bit of a bit of a washout character, but his, his you know his story, his, his character, who he really is, really comes forward throughout the series, and I found myself rooting for him. I was like, yeah, you're doing everything right. You're checking for this, and you'll see what I mean by that. I like him. He's a really good character. Um, the character development for all these is is really good. All of these uh, people, particularly the kids in this, you'll see. They're really, they're really forced to like grapple with a few things which matures them beyond their time in, in a way because there's a feud between uh, Lucas and Mike at one point because of the jealousy and there's a... The, Lucas is kind of third wheeled a bit, he feels pushed out and that's kind of not the thing that you would really expect kids to really uh, get into until about high school I would say. I, I wouldn't know, um, I didn't have my first girlfriend until, um, well... <laughs> Yeah, high school. So yeah, that makes sense. And not only that, obviously the friend's gone missing, they think he's dead, then, it, then they're not, then they risk their own lives to go save him. Uh, yeah, I mean, what more can you say? And so whilst things are underway with, with the, with, uh, I don't want to say a manhunt, I'll, I'll, I'll call it the rescue operation, to find Will. Um, they actually, the kids, decide to break the curfew which has been implemented to protect other people potentially from going missing. The kids actually uh, break curfew and go out on a stormy night. 
to a spot where Will's bike is found. They then come across um, another main character called Eleven. Eleven! And she she's pretty badass, I've got to admit. Um, years of being raised up, undergoing obviously government experiments. You know, she's socially, um, she's really socially inadequate. Uh, her social skills are really underdeveloped and she really starts to reconnect with the world um, or even just connect with them with it in the first place and she, she she really finds you know the better side of humanity which, which she hasn't really had the, the chance to experience because of Dr. Martin Brenner <laughs> uh, yeah so if you're this far in you're probably wondering okay well you know it sounds it sounds okay I guess that's just the beginning of the story I've just uh, outlined for you uh, it's described as a drama a horror and a mystery and if you get far enough it's usually about 10 minutes into the into each episode then the title screen comes up which I just love because it just picks up from where it left off before it's not trying to self aggrandize itself by going stranger things you know it's just it gets straight into it, and then it reminds you what you're watching. I like that. Even Wired.com describes the opening of Stranger Things, the, the actual title sequence, as having a kind of John Carpenter reference, and there couldn't be more on the money with that, in my opinion. Um, personally, it, it just stunk of like a kind of Tron-esque vibe, with the, the red neon almost, um, and, and the synth. Oh my god, my... my in an 80s baby just came out. I was born in 89, of course, so I wasn't really around very long in the 80s, but nevertheless, as Calvin Harris says, if you were born in the 80s, I've got love for you. <laughs> so back to Elle. She's got some pretty freaky powers, mainly psychokinesis, the ability to, to move things with her mind. She can kind of astro project as well, in a sense, within her own mind, because she's put into a sensory deprivation tank at one point to, just to kind of focus exclusively on finding one particular person. Set in the 80s, they're looking for for this commie guy, a, a Russian, um, thousands of miles away in, in, in Russia. <laughs> She's obviously, you know, within her own mind, but it's just a black void. And in it is the only thing that she's concentrating on, listening to this, this man, this Russian. And she's actually able to project what, what's being said into nearby radios as well, which obviously has strategic government uses, which is part of the we reason they're trying to really weaponize, you know, her her capabilities, which they, as you might have imagined, have, you know, pretty much created in the first place. She's subject eleven. People came before her. You never guess who was subject ten. Her mother, and her mother via the use of psychotropic drugs to expand the mind, her mother is now pretty much a cabbage, uh, bless her. Or, or is she? We don't know. Either way, she she appears catatonic. But Elle, during listening to this Russian, she, using her powers in, in such a way, it clearly is almost akin to a window because something else comes to her, her attention. She's almost distracted and the Russian man just disappears from a, from a from her focus, all of a sudden, we see a shadowy figure in this black void, I know. It seems to be feeding, minding its own business almost, and uh, she's told at one point to go and approach it. So she does. The monster sees her back. Naturally, being a scared young girl, she freaks out and lashes out almost, puts her hands up and just I'm not kidding you, she literally blows a hole in space-time. She punches through into a different dimension and opens well, a gateway, really, between, between our world and what the kids come to know as the Upside Down. Where does that, that idea come from? Well, it comes from, from Elle. She bumps into them, like I say, in the woods. And the kids come out with a rather chilling, yet accurate description of the Upside Down, they call it from their Dungeons and Dragons board game. And I'm, I'm gonna read that to you now because it actually gave me goosebumps within the context of uh, Strange Things. The Veil of Shadows is a dimension that is a dark reflection or echo of our world. 
It is a place of death and decay, a plain out of fears, a plain with monsters. It is right next to you, and you don't even see it. Woo! Scarily accurate from a from a damn child's game as well. I I, I got goosebumps. Wow, amazing. At this point uh, of the video, I'm just going to go into the the ending of Stranger Things episode eight. What I think they mean because there has been a few cliffhangers left and I'm going to cover them now. Also, if you have any further insight into these cliffhangers, please let me know. Let's get a discussion started. I want to learn as well. This is just an off the cuff rant and yeah, let's let's learn. I've read a few things of course, but you know, let's let's, let's do it. So yeah, in, in episode eight, there is, there is a few cliffhangers. One of them with Mike, one of them with Elle, one with Hopper, the policeman, one with Dr. Brenner and Finally, yeah, in my opinion, five. The other with Tuliped. What happened to him? He got shot the hell up. He got beat the hell up as well. He got his foot in the bear trap. He just disappears into the upside down. Hopper and Joyce Byers, they see a trail of blood leading to where Will was. And what happened to Tuliped? He just vanished, who knows? That's a nice segue into Will's cliffhanger. Will. His mother and Hopper actually find him cocooned against the wall. Pure Ridley Scott alien style, right? He's got this, he's got this tubule, this tentacle in his mouth to which Hopper has to pull all the way out. And I'm not kidding you, it must be about a meter long or something, what he pulls out of his mouth. It's that far down his throat, it's clearly in his stomach or in his lungs, who knows? But they, they successfully revive him and they bring him home and play happy families, right? Right? Wrong, obviously wrong. At Christmas time we see Will go into the bathroom. All is not what it seems. He then proceeds to cough up what appears to be some sort of slug. This is the freaky part as well and this has led to a few fan theories as well. Will doesn't really appear, appear freaked out by this. The slug just slides down the drain and as it does so there is a flash of the upside down. What does this mean? We'll, we'll talk about it now. So there's been a few theories. Is this the real Will? Was this thing that we saw in his mouth just some sort of, I don't know, some sort of feed from some sort of gestation cocoon of the real will or something? You know, it was copying him, you know, the, the thing style, who knows? Was this slug thing controlling will? And it just decided, okay, I'm safe now. I'm gonna get out of here and I'm going to do some shit. So the, the body snatching kind of theory, um, it might be possible, it might be. However, Will freaks out at the moment the bathroom flashes into the upside down, which says to me, yeah, it could be Will. Will could be in there. He could have been controlled or just a host for this slug thing, you know, to come into our world. But enough about our world, let's talk about Eleven. Where did she go once she killed the monster? She seemed to be well, when she took out the monster, she seemed to be enveloped by the disintegration of, of the monster and she disappears. We don't know that she's dead though. We don't know that using her powers will kill her. We know that it clearly hurts her in some way because of nosebleeds, which is indicative of uh, brain trauma, which yeah, brain trauma can kill you, right? <laughs> yeah, or is it just literally uh, capillaries bursting due to, you know, increased blood pressure. I don't know, I'm brainstorming, right? It could just be that. It clearly drains her though, right? So she is possibly dead. However, interestingly, we see Hopper after he comes out of the hospital, seeing Will wake up, by the way. He hops into, uh, a, well, the government are pretty much waiting for him outside and he finishes his cigarette and just casually walks into the car with them. At the end of the episode, however, we see Hopper walking into the woods. He, go he goes into the woods between the, the Hawkins Energy Laboratory and the Byers house, right? It's that woods there, obviously. And he puts in to a box some food that he takes from the Christmas party. So he literally goes out of his way to take some food into the middle of the woods, put it into a box, and these particular snacks, which were Elle's favorite, by the way. Now, what could this mean? Is she alive or is it just kind of, or is it just kind of uh, depositing flowers at a proverbial grave? Who knows? 
She could be alive. She could be in the upside down. She could be able to get these. He might be keeping her alive. He might be working with the government in the knowledge that she's alive. Who knows? We'll, we'll find out because on a newspaper clip, there's a good, there's an excellent uh, fan th theory. I've getting, I've no doubt got a few from him by the way as well. So I'm, I'm just going to give him some credit as well because I loved his, his, I loved his video on, on his thoughts of this actually. So let me just direct you to him. I've got a few of these, um, these, these fan theories as well, apart from um, Fanflix. Yeah, go and watch his video. I'm gonna link it below as well because this guy's really articulate. He's clearly a lot more professional than I am. This is just a fan made off the cuff uh, rant. So basically the whole, the whole season's left on many cliffhangers and there's gonna be a lot of conversation about this as well. Dr. Brenner, is he still alive? It looks like he might be. Elle, is she alive? It looks like she might be. What's Hopper doing? Is he working with the government? Looks like he might be. Is Tulip Head still alive? It's possible. It looks like he might be. And, and finally, Will. What's going on with Will? Who knows, right? Is it really him? Is he somehow touched or cursed, influenced, whatever, by Tulip Head or this, or this slug thing which came out of him? Similar to the Knight's King touching Bran and then being able to come into the Three-Eyed Raven's tree. Is their world, is Tulip Head, is he now able to do the same thing? Is a bridge being reached by, by uh, someone, some, someone from this plane? Uh, who knows? That bathroom moment had a very Silent Hill-esque feel to it, you know? A kind of different, but at the same time, right here dimension, you know? So yeah, I've talked way too long. Um, I'm, uh, hopefully I didn't bore you too much, but let me know what you think of these theories that I've just listed at the end there. And let me know if there's any other theories that I've missed out. No doubt there will be as well. Let me know what you think of the show. Uh, if you like the video, leave a quick thumbs up or whatever. And check out the rest of my channel. Thanks very much for watching, guys and girls. And I'll see you in my next videos. Hope you didn't mind the rant. <laughs> Have a lovely, lovely night. Bye-bye.